welcome to the Lad Racing YouTube channel. We are trying to get our Street Stock Intimidator ready to go racing for the first time. But here's the catch, we got two more days to go. We're down to crunch time and luckily I have pretty well got most of my list down. One thing that was on our list was stretching a couple tires out for the run on the right side. Uh, because we don't want taller side tires on the left side and smaller tires on the right side. Why? Well, it helps with our stagger like we said in a couple videos ago. So, these are our first two tires that I pushed out to get stretched. Uh, this is the one I plan on running on the right rear and hopefully that one on the right front. Uh, I said in the staggering video that I would tell you guys how to do this. Well, from what I have learned, is you air tires up to the max capacity, which me personally, I do not recommend you guys do it because it's dangerous. It's, I take it about 10 pounds past the max capacity of the tire. Then I put them outside in the sun and let them sit. Now these tires are 30, 45. I don't know if you can really see it in the camera, but they're a little bit of a harder tire. They got a harder sidewall. So I left them out in the sun for like three days. Been stupid hot here, 100, about 100 degrees roughly every day. So uh, I'm gonna air them down to where I normally check them at, which is 15 pounds, and see where they're at. Okay, out of these two tires, uh, I was hoping to gain at least two inches of circumference out of them. And just by chance, that's exactly what we got out of both of these tires. Uh, that one was 83 when I originally measured it, and that was 83 and three quarters. So we got 85 uh, out of that one, 85 and three quarters out of that one. So we was able to gain an extra two inches. So. This tire here is one that I've been messing with for a while. I need to get it done. Need to air it up. Take it outside. So make sure it's going to hold air. Uh, something I hate doing with bead, well with these tires in general, especially bead locks, is using silicone. Uh, it just makes a big mess. A lot more work to if you got to change the tire out on the rim. You gotta take it apart, clean it, put it back, you know, put more silicone on. It's just a really big pain in the rear. But I guess there's a defect in this beadlock itself. So I went ahead and already put the silicone on there. It's been sitting for a couple days. And I need to run through, tighten the bolts down, put some air in it, take it outside and let it stretch. Because that's an 83 and this this is definitely a right side setup so we need to get it up to 85 if we can so I'm gonna tighten these down and set it outside for a few days and we'll see if we get a right rear tire out of it I'm gonna go ahead and get the oil change in our rat bed engine uh, You ever wonder what was inside of a Wix filter? Well, let's figure this out together. See if we can get it out of here. Okay, here you go. And that's a Wix oil filter uh, without the casing on it. And what I'm looking for is down in these ridges, look for any big metal flakes, uh, metal shavings, anything like that. There's some debris in there that 
possibly from put, you know having the engine open and putting it back together. There's a spider. Kind of hard to see. But right there, a little spider. Not really seeing any metal shavings themselves. Like I said, just it's like a bunch of debris from when we put it together. Uh, part of the reason why we're changing the oil, and I'm kind of glad I went ahead and made the decision to change the oil filter because there is a lot of gunk built up in the filter. Uh, you know, this engine had 106,000 miles on it when we decided to use it. Uh, we didn't change anything on the bottom end, didn't acid wash it or anything like that. It just, we took it apart, cleaned what we could reach, uh, cleaned up the cylinders and cylinder walls, and put the heads in the cam in it. And that's all we really did to the internals. Uh, so, probably a good thing we're changing filters out and changing oil. We'll uh, keep making progress here. In case you're wondering, we had to cut it. 10 snips and look down in down in there I don't want to tip too far but nothing nothing big some really fine stuff just like I kind of expected uh, either way we're going to run this thing it's either going to go or blow we're this far we ain't quit okay well the reason you label bottles when you don't have what's in it in that specific bottle is well mistakes can get made and I made a mistake because that's fresh oil that I gotta drain out because I wasn't paying, thinking. I thought my bottle of zinc was zinc, but I forgot that I put brake fluid in that bottle because I used everything that was in that bottle when I put the oil in the engine originally. So, as a result, we're draining oil again. So, just to kind of help out, I'm gonna run some regular 530 through to kind of help maybe push some of that brake fluid that I accidentally put in there. But it maybe help kind of push the rest of it through and kind of flush the engine a little bit. Ain't gonna hurt nothing, but we're already taking a gamble with this engine as it is, not knowing what it's gonna do and how many miles it's got on it and no telling how many races on the heads and the cam. And there's just a big gamble going on already with this engine and we don't wanna risk risk it any worse so we're gonna flush the system real quick with just some 530 that i've had laying around for a while so when we get fresh oil we'll go ahead and put it together and you know hopefully have an oil filter and fire okay so while i was waiting on oil because of my screw up i uh went ahead and started another project that kind of debated on whether or not i really wanted to do or not but especially being by myself because it's really a two-man job but when you work by yourself so much you tend to figure out things on how to do things by yourself and at some point it actually becomes difficult to work with other people because you become so used to working by yourself it's kind of a never-ending circle but uh what i did and this is a safety thing now, I know me and safety probably aren't two things you hear together very often, but what we did is you can see across here maybe is we installed a drive shaft loop. Uh, it goes up over top of the drive shaft, comes down and around, and bolts to the floor on both sides. Uh, not a high tech fancy thing but as you can see it was got it bolt up to the bottom my arms are long 
but they're not long enough to reach the bottom of the car and up and over. So I had to get a little creative. So what I did was took some tape and taped the, well, on the passenger side, I taped the bolts up so they'd stick up through the bottom of the floor and the driver's side, I put them down so I wouldn't put my feet on them. But uh, either way, I used tape to hold the bolts in place so I'd get the net started. And then on the upper side, I used the wrench. And as you can see, I got it butted up against this bolt right here. And basically the same concept over there on the driver's side. You can see the four bolts over there on the floor. Tip my finger. Uh, basically the same concept over there. I just didn't have the bolt the rest of the wrench against. But either way, I put a wrench up here, rest against something, crawl up underneath, wrench it, tighten it down until I couldn't tighten it no more, and call it good. been changed twice fluids are all topped off and all we gotta do is put the tires on I think we're good so next video unless it rains out or it gets stupid hot and track motor changes his mind we're gonna be at St. Francis County next video uh, hopefully this whole used bucket of bolts that we call the ramp bed engine to hold up long enough to make it through hot laps if we can make it through hot laps i think we can make it through the feature uh, i can't think of anything major that i need to do to the car other than put the tires back on um i think they put clean some more junk out of the inside i've got to have a trailing arm there and a wrench and flapper wheel we might grind a couple tires before we load up. I don't know what we got going on yet, but uh, hopefully Intimidator will be at the track next time. And hopefully we can beat our buddy with the 94 car with his old shocks on the front. And hopefully we can finish the season out on that engine with this car uh, who knows we might if we can get enough subscribers to our channel to where we kind of help some of the funding it's possible I'd really like to do an LS swap I've seen a few a few of these guys doing doing them on these cars I think an LS engine the stock 5.3 I should say of a say 2001 Silverado. I think that would be competitive to a fully built racing. And I think that's just straight out of the box. That's about tuning or anything like that. Uh, I, I think I'd really like to try something like that. You guys ought to comment down below if you have done it. How you liked it versus a standard 350. That, 95% of the racers use uh, nowadays. Well, pretty much we've always used. Uh, comment down below what you think. Uh, how do you think our outcome's going to be at St. Francis? I mean, we really don't know much about the car, what it's going to do. Uh, if you do show up and things go south, this is your fair warning. This car is completely untested. We got a whole piece of scrap metal right there for an engine. We don't know what's going to happen. So I guess next time we'll see you at the track. So God bless you. We'll catch you later.